pulls him back, which stops him. Because otherwise, uh, when a person is in that position of absolute power, it's very easy for him you know, to abuse power. Similarly, all of the other categories, whether it is the youth growing up uh, in the wor worshiping Allah, being righteous, how can he do that without being conscious of Allah? He has to be aware that Allah is watching him. He has to be conscious of Allah. This is what keeps him from all of the, the various uh, attractions and pleasures of the life around him. Uh, similarly, the one whose heart is attached to the masjid. It is his consciousness of Allah which causes him to want to be back in the masjid. His awareness and his desire to want to be alone in seclusion in worship of Allah. And similarly, the people who meet and separate only for the sake of Allah, then it's the consciousness of, of, of Allah in their meeting and in their separation which keeps them from overstepping the bounds. That their relationship be one within the bounds which Allah has set. And also, that individual who stops himself when he is invited by a beautiful and uh, high-positioned woman to corruption, it is the consciousness of Allah, his awareness of Allah, which causes him to say, I fear Allah. The fear of Allah comes out of that consciousness. And similarly, the one who gives charity and hides it. It's very easy to give that charity and let everybody know about it. But it's only his consciousness of Allah, his awareness that Allah is watching him, and knowing that he will get his reward from Allah. He doesn't need it from people around him. That's, this is what leads him now to give that charity without anybody knowing about it. And of course, that individual who remembers Allah, he remembers Allah uh, by himself. There's nobody around. It's the consciousness of Allah which leads him to the remembrance of Allah. And in his remembrance of Allah in a conscious state, in, in other words, he's not doing just the ritual, you know, because people get caught up in the ritual of remembrance, where they will just you know, mention Allah's name or say it in phrases, etc. But it's just a, an automatic ritual. They count it off on their fingers or they count it on beads or whatever. They're doing, you know, it is just a ritual. Their mind may be elsewhere, etc. They're not doing it with the consciousness of Allah. And as such, it's not going to bring them to tears. It's just a ritual they go through. But when a person does this with full consciousness of Allah, then it must touch his or her heart. And it may be noted also, that all of these groups, not only do they have shared meanings, but they're all interlinked. One depends on the other. Because if we consider the just imam, the just ruler, he is the one who will set up a noble and righteous community. And in such a community, young people can now grow up worshipping Allah in large numbers. Of course, in, in circumstances where you know, the Islamic laws are not established, we don't have really truly just Islamic communities, it means that there are so many pressures out there, very few young people will be able to do this. But when the imam, the, the just imam, imamun adil, when he sets up that community, he ensures that Allah's laws are functioning within the community, it gives young people a much greater chance and opportunity to grow up worshipping Allah. And similarly, one who grows up worshipping Allah is one who will be attached to the masjid. Because prayer in congregation, he knows that this is an obligation on him. As much as he is able, he needs to be in the masjid praying for all of the major prayers, for all the reward that Allah has promised through his messenger for it. So that one who grows up worshipping Allah is going to be one regular in the masjid. He's going to be there for his five times daily prayers. As long as it is, it is humanly possible, he's going to be there. And he's going to feel sad if he misses his prayers in the masjid. So his heart is linked to the masjid. And naturally, such a person who comes to the masjid regularly for prayer, he gets to meet other people who are, meet, who are praying in the masjid. And his relationship with them, the friendship which develops between them, is one which will develop out of Worshipping Allah. They see each other regularly in the masjid. And they greet each other. 
they develop a friendship which is for the sake of Allah. And when they finish the prayers, after they finish, and they greet each other, they bid each other farewell, and they separate, they separate on a, circum on a, on a state which is in the consciousness and the awareness of Allah. And so they separate for the pleasure of Allah also. And such a person who has grown up in youth, worshipping Allah, regular in the masjid, such a person, when a woman who is in a position of power and is, has dazzling beauty, when she calls him to corruption, whether it is a call direct or it is indirect through the media, through the magazines, through the television, or however it comes, that call comes, he stops himself and says, I fear Allah. Why and how? Because he has developed that consciousness through being linked to the masjid, through growing up as a youth, fearing and worshipping Allah. Also, such a person who is regular in prayer, he is the one who is not caught. This one, he, as, as he was not caught by the woman or by the corruption which was invite, he was invited to, the money didn't matter to him. Then, when he is giving of his wealth, he is not concerned about people seeing it. Because he knows money is not that important. That was a beautiful, rich woman. She had money. She had position. You know, what power which people are normally attracted to. But he didn't go fall for it. So therefore, he is not attached to this world to such a degree that when he gives, he must be known for it. So people may praise him, you know, clap and, and honor him, etc. No, he gives and he doesn't seek his reward from those he's given to. He leaves that with Allah. And it's only a person who has managed to overcome these desires, you know, and uh, seek only Allah's pleasure. Naturally, such a person, when he remembers Allah, then tears are going to come to his eyes. It's a person who has all these qualities. When they uh, remember Allah, then tears are going to come to their eyes because it has real meaning in their own lives. So we can see here that all of these groups are interlinked. The characteristics of one group flows into the other. The, uh, the second group is a product of the first. So this is a, another aspect of these seven individuals which are, is worth reflecting on. Furthermore, what we can see in all of these categories is that the individual struggles against his or her desires. The imam who is just, the just ruler, for him to be just, he has to overcome the desire to do as one pleases. He is in a position. There are no forces to stop him. He has the final say. He is in control. No one is over him. Of course, Allah is over him. But no other human being is over him to tell him, you're right, you're wrong, you, don't, you know, do this, don't do this. No, he has the final say. For him to not abuse that position, and his desires will call him to it, to its abuse, he has to overcome those desires. Similarly, the young person, for him to grow up worshipping Allah, not be distracted. You know, there's so many things out there, so many things to be involved in. You know, as young people, Hormones are raging, you know, life is fun, it seems very long, you have all the time in the world, you know, all this kind of, of, of thinking, this, this way of, of, of life, this way of reflecting. All of that cannot be overcome unless one overcomes the very desires for these things. So, overcoming the desires is a basic part of all of these groups is a basic component or characteristic shared by all of the members of this group. And inshallah, in our coming segment, we'll continue to look at how overcoming desires is an element within all of the other groups. And we'll continue to look further into the depth of meaning of this wonderful uh, saying of the Prophet. May God's peace and blessings be upon him. 
With that, dear viewers, I'd like to thank you for being with us in this segment of our program, Those in the Shade of Allah's Throne. And we hope that you continue to follow this program throughout its presentation. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.